to the Italian Football Podcast. We have to talk about Dusan Vlaovic um, because this, this, is a, this is a problem now. This is becoming a, a yeah. big, big problem for, for, for Dusan Vlaovic uh, and for, for Juventus. And he's been there now for, for over a year. He joined in, in January 2022 for a fee that will reach 80 million euros, becoming the most expensive winter signing in the history of Zep Serie A. Juventus thought it was something of a coup. He, he rejected Arsenal to join Juve. Um, he was just coming back, coming off the, the, the back of scoring the most goals in a calendar year in Serie yeah. A for over 60 years at Fiorentina. Yeah. He was posting numbers like Haaland and Lewandowski numbers. I mean, he was, he was I mean, people, people forget, you know, because when they watch him now, just what an absolute phenomenon and sensation this guy was. You know, this was, people were talking of this guy like potential Ballon d'Or winner, people, people mm. were saying. Uh, I mean, more than a year on, how do you look at, how do you look at, at look He looks so unhappy. I mean, it's just, he looks, he does not look like someone who's enjoying his football. He doesn't look like he's in harmony. He doesn't look like he's happy. He looks, it just doesn't give off. The, the vibe around it is not very comforting and encouraging. Um, and, he, we know he wanted to join Juve, and he, he really wanted to join Juve, and that's why he rejected Arsenal. But I wonder, and 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 I and I always thought that Arsenal was not the perfect fit for him, being based on our Arsenal play. I don't think he's that kind of a striker. But I wonder if if he isn't regretting that. I'm sure he is, because Arsenal are playing some of the most interesting and 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 exciting football and and they can actually go on and win the premier league yeah. um you know there's that's not an impossibility when you keep winning late and they're doing so without a real number nine and you're thinking well i'm sure vlaovic could have adapted somehow even though he's not i i, I think for example someone like alexander isak or victor osiman is better adapted to the style of football that arteta plays at arsenal than vlaovic is i i think he still could do something for them mm. um but we're looking, we're, we're reviewing that through the prism of of, of Vlaovic now, and not yeah. a year ago. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I think he would be regretting it because I think we'd be looking at a very different Vlaovic now. Yeah, if he'd completely. have gone to Arsenal uh, than than the Vlaovic, who's a complete shell of the player that he was at Fiorentina. Let alone being a, a player that you would think going to a bigger club would become a much better player. Uh, it's yeah. not even that. I mean, he's 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 not only stagnated, he's regressed massively in yeah. everything at Juve, in every single facet of his game. I mean, obviously, the, the, the hard numbers show it in terms of the goals. You can see the, the number of goals that he scored at Juventus uh, compared to the number of goals he scored at Fiorentina. And I mean, his form is horrible. I mean, he's got no goals in, in the last four games, but in nine games this year, in 2023, he's only scored in two of those games. In his last 14 games um, for Juventus, he's only scored in four of those 14 matches. Um you know, so the, the numbers, the goals show it, but just if just look at his overall game and, and you really just have to watch him, you know, to, to, to just to, just to see this. But from a technical and tactical point of view, he doesn't look close to being a top player. I mean, his first touch is, is heavy. To be fair, his, his first touch was always something that probably needed working on at Fiorentina, um, but it hasn't improved. Not only has it not improved, I think it's got worse. Uh, he, he's too static. His movement is poor. Uh, he's always standing with his back to goal all the time. He, he just doesn't, and when the ball comes, he doesn't protect the ball. He doesn't link up well at all. Uh, he struggles kind of bringing others into play. He's not involved in the build up uh, at all. Um, but he looks slow and heavy footed over kind of one to two yards. And he's not a slow player. He's got pace. He's quick, you know, but over one to two yards, he just looks very lethargic. He's, he's reading. That's the thing. It he's looks lethargic. Yeah. That's the thing. And, and that to me suggests that, you know, is there something more going on that we don't know about? Um, has well, a relationship. have a groin problem, but we're talking about something, this is something that's happened since he's, since he's joined. You know, it's not something that's happened just since that groin injury. It was a, it was a groin, wasn't it? Groin injury yeah. that he had carried into the World Cup. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's everything about him. You just like his re- reading and positioning on crosses. I mean, he's got Kostic, one of the best crosses in the world putting balls in for him. You can ask for a better crosser, you know, but you look he at really him, can't. he's, he's he very really static. Can't. And he's they know really... each other from the Serbian national team as well. So, yeah. yeah. Capello was saying this last night on the, on the Calcio club that, that, that he can't, doesn't seem to know how to get away from his marker, which is very mm. worrying. 
Um, he's just gone backwards since joining Juve. His, 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 his overall game, he hasn't improved his weaknesses and his games have regressed. And, you know, that is, you, OK, you could maybe paint some of the blame on the player, but for me, it's on Allegri, you know. No, it and is. It's I on Allegri. That is. I mean, I made, the, I made the mistake. I tweeted this last <laughs> night. I made the mistake. I have to put my hands up. People say, some people say, you know, like the Tottenham fans that have a go at me over Kulisevsky. Well, I doubled down on Kulisevsky because I believe, that's because I believe in it. I still believe in what I said. I made the mistake of predicting with 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 um, with with Vlaovic. I made the mistake of predicting that he would soon become a, a world that he would develop into a world class player when he's when and I made a mistake because and I will never make that mistake again because I should have never said that when his manager was Allegri because Allegri can't develop young attacking players. He can't develop young players. At he all. can. Like, he can. Ever according to him, which I love him for, oh, he said in the pre-match press conference he was asked specifically this question by a Gazeta de los Sport journalist, and he said, "Well, actually, I, I've, I've, I'm, 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 you know, I've, I've changed since I became a grandfather." Oh God! <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope that the, he's not teaching that to his grandkids. Let's hope the mother is. I love it. I love <laughs> the way he said it. I mean, the question was so. Oh, now you're starting to play young. players players now and you you know you, you you're playing you know you, you become a young players coach and he says yeah and he's so sarcastic puts mm. his arms you know crosses his arms and goes back and says yeah it's, I, I've, I've changed since i've become a grandfather oh, <laughs> love him yeah. he's just three max